Nathan already talking about what gonna happen election time. But I could tell you, Nathan, I could tell you, there will be a strong resistance. Because if the PPP ain't willing for Tech Yala, y'all yeah, remember the riots at Bath, the riots at Luziknan. Y'all yeah, remember them days? Take form action to act as a deterrent. A deterrent. And it must be also guided ethically. Because the police did take form action in some cases when they shot. When Jagio walks from corner to corner this world and be this country and behaves like he's a god. And nobody dares to touch him or nobody has shown the willingness to touch him. And we will res respect their right, but if they harm other people, then we'd have to take strong action. And that's that's what I I would repeat. If the PPP continues to allow this criminal organization all other parts of the world if opposition leaders and, and members of the opposition act the way that the PNC is that they would have been in jail. We know, we didn't need an inquiry to tell us that the PNC operatives were going into Buxton and encouraging people. Good morning, Kodakian listeners. I always say it's time for the opposition to start one big fight in the parliament and broke it up. And we dead body wound, wound the Desi legislative branch. Dr. Chagio, um, just to get it a little more clear. In the past, yeah. the armed forces, like the Ghana Defense Force, lost AK 47s, a number of AK 47s that end up in the hands of bandits that were called freedom fighters and supported by the PNC. What is the strategic plan to ensure things like this? Because you're saying they will face the full extent of the law. What law? This is a law that has been lacking in the past, a security force that has been lacking in the past. What strategic plan is there? So, so the Norton talked about security forms that we are putting in place that would participate in violence at election time. You find out how many security forms are established and guns sold to them by that ministry. Because people are taking fucking bully no more. Just so you know, Nathan, you and your supporters and all the people who plan to rise up and take power by force. Who in dead body wrong? Did it start in there? Did the revolution start inside there? The day they they ain't serving no purpose with the one one seat majority with with PPP got, and they can't change nothing and they can't do nothing. Well, you still didn't get your ticket. This flight takes off every single day. Tap that subscription button. Thanks. The, uh, Norton talked about security forms that we are putting in place that would participate in violence at election time. You find out how many security forms are established and guns sold to them by that ministry. Norton's claims um, as rhetoric and claims to violence um, with the suggestion that he and his ilk will be met with the full extent of the law. Are you suggesting the same law uh, that stood by while people went and looted the Mondrapo market um, after which Norton came and represented the criminal elements? Are you suggesting that same law or do you have a strategic plan for this time, since the game um, of elections and power has, you know, gone up so much more, and so much more is yeah. um, at hand here to get to gain. So a number of people in that case. So this ostensibly came out of a protest for justice, and um, it descended. It deteriorated into almost terrorist type of activities uh, led by many people there. The people in Golden Grove were had the right to protest peacefully. And I think in that case, maybe justifiably so, to protest peacefully. But when it crossed a threshold, a criminal threshold, 
Now, people were, were compensated in many of that area. So the treasury should be utilized to do that where there is a failing on the part of the state. The treasury must bear uh, or compensate people. And two, a number of those people were charged and under the Terrorism Act. And they're still before the court. So action was taken against the offenders and now they're before the court. Sometimes it's hard to prevent things that happen spontaneously. So you have to take action, form action afterwards. I am more in favor of the police building an intelligence capability and being able to act, take form action to act as a deterrent, a deterrent. And it must be also guided ethically because the police did take form action in some cases when they shot pellets at a number of people who were protesting against the attempt to steal the elections. But they were protesting some, if they didn't protest, then maybe we would have had a very different country today. And they took form action right at the beginning by shooting pellets at a number of people who came to see me. Some of them have 30 something, 40 pellets in their body. body but, and and uh, women, etc. under the Grange administration. And, uh, but they were protesting the attempt by the Granger and the others to steal the elections. Norton and the others to steal the elections. So sometimes you have to look at the cause. And in this case, if he put, people have a right to protest causes, um, but peacefully. And we will res respect their right, but if they harm other people, then we'd have to take strong action. And that's, that's what I, I would repeat. Dr. Chagdio, um, just to get it a little more clear, in the past, yeah. the armed forces, like the Ghana Defense Force, lost AK-47s, a number of AK-47s that end up in the hands of bandits that were called freedom fighters and supported by the PNC. What is the strategic plan to ensure things like this? Because you're saying they will face the full extent of the law. Yeah. What law? This is a law that has been lacking in the past, a security force that has been lacking in the past. What strategic plan is there? So, so you're, there are lots of things. You're, you're, you want me to outline again the criminal history of the PNC? So a lot of the weapons that we found in the hands of the bandits could be traced back to an era when those weapons were taken from the army and transferred to the headquarters of the People's National Congress. They happened in the period around which Walter Rodney was assassinated by the PNC. You'd recall the commission of inquiry into the Rodney death. That those, that question was raised and the individuals who sign out those arms to the PNC from the army identified. Those weapons were never returned to the army. In the crime wave, a lot of those weapons were found on individuals. So when we why do you think that APNU, in spite of them talking about the trouble period, Granger likes to speak about the trouble period, never conducted an inquiry into what happened there? Because we know we didn't need an inquiry to tell us that the PNC operatives were going into Buxton and encouraging people to, to participate in this. Granger then went and conducted a commission of inquiry into Lindo Creek, where the security forces were accused of killing those people, falsely accused. So it tells you whose side he was on, not the security forces. But in that very same period, you had Winston Felix and Collins who headed the army, 
Both of them became members of APNU and they're in the leadership of the PNC now. Leadership of the PNC, I think, in their central committee. You, the difficulties we had in, in ensuring that they carried out lawful instructions from the defense board, etc., were enormous. And therefore, you had a situation where the, the, the army and the police were, were undermining carrying out their legitimate functions. People forget that. They forget the call from Basil Williams to Winston Felix saying, at Agricola, boy, you help us out. I don't know what he meant to do. But when the, when the massacre took place at Agricola. So we know that this was described by US agencies as a political insurgency. This was just a crime wave. This was a political insurgency. At the end of it, every single one of those people were either apprehended and in prison or killed by the security forces. So justice, justice has been meted out to them or every, at the end of it. But they created turmoil in this country. The capacity to create turmoil is an, an disruption PNC has demonstrated that all, all the time. But this country has withstood everything they thrown at us, even in the tough days when they had greater control over people by pushing the racism. And we've withstood it. And we withstand it again now. And now I believe I have greater confidence in the security forces and their ability to, to pursue justice fairly in accordance with the, the Defense Act and the, the, all the laws governing the police force. That they, they have a, a capability, they have demonstrated that. And what I was so pleased with that when the period in the, when they tried to steal the elections, there was provocation and in fact an, an active attempt to get the army to and run the country and they refuse to do so so i'm i'm have greater confidence now that any attempt to disrupt the peace will not go unanswered we have a, a this time more ever than in ever in our history we have a cap capacity and the willingness in our security forces to do to comply with the law we've had a tough time you, it's not easy when you're running a country and, and trying to keep peace and protect people. And you have the head of the army and the head of the police force who undermine you at every turn. Undermine you at every turn for political reasons. It's not easy, but at the end of it, we overcome, overcame all of that. Now, before we start, I'm going to frame this perspective that we should try. Remember, I can't tell you how to frame your mindset and how to hold your perspective. But for this particular video and just for these couple of minutes, we're going to try to frame our perspectives and our mindset from this point right here. You're, you're in a peaceful place. We're on a sports field on a sunny day in Guyana. There's no rain in the sky. We're either playing cricket or we playing football, whichever one is your preference. Or if not, whichever sport is your preference, that's the one we playing. If you don't like sports, then you might be there to spectate. So you're watching from the most comfortable place that you can watch from, and you're enjoying the festivities in the way that you would enjoy it. There's food, there's drinks, and there's your favorite kind of music, and we are kicking back. No matter where you are right now, that's the perspective and that's the mindset I want you to come from. Because we just heard about the history of violence. We just heard about the history of unrest. The history of us not being able to live together and share and work together because of the fulcrum. Because of the fulcrum of oppression from which 
the two major races find themselves originating from in Guyana. Come on, we know the history. A lot of us are dealing with trauma, post-traumatic disorder, and we never really dealt with it in a real way. So it's passing on from generation to generation. But we're the generation that's going to make the change. We're the generation that's going to make things different. We're the generation that's going to do what we need to do. So that you see that perspective that I was giving you, that fulcrum, that frame that we're holding in our mind to create the aspect that we want to hold in our mind for this video. That's going to be the reality for every single generation after ours. If we can find it within ourselves to love one another, if we can find it within ourselves to have peace and share and live in governance, but in governance that's going to allow us to live some semblance of life. Because guess what? This is one crop. This is one time. We don't have no time to recycle and to play around. We don't have no time to say that we're going to deal with this election or deal with this situation in the same way like we dealt with it in the past. Dr. Jack Dio done spoke already. He already gave us the insights already. He already told us this is what was going on. And I know a lot of persons, look, you're going to have a different perspective or you might have a different perspective. Let's talk about it in the comment section because guess what? We're all here to learn and to remember and to listen to the perspectives of one another because guess what that's the way forward we all did something wrong along the way when it comes down to this election thing on either side on either side and to tell you the truth i'm coming from a pole that's neutral enough because you know why i don't have a racial side that i could pick like most of us or some of us that might be on the video i might have so many races inside of me to be honest with you that i can't pick one and say i'm gonna pick that side because guess what my great grandmother is one side and the other one is the next side so then which side i'm gonna pick hmm? i gotta deal with this situation from a real place i can't be biased so i'm gonna be biased against one mother you understand when Jack Dio walks from corner to corner of this world and be this country and behaves like he's a god. And nobody dares to touch him or nobody has shown the willingness to touch him. Because he doesn't stand alone because of the backings that he has. Why at some point in the history of this country where Jakan was an untouchable? Brahmanan Nandalal was an untouchable. Um, Taps Butcher, they were untouchable. Because they had backings, they had people who were standing with them. Everybody is saying that the PPP is doing this and the PPP is doing that. Because there is no opposition. Are we using opposition there as a verb or a noun? Let me get deep. Because opposition as a noun names a group of people who are opposed to something or other. But opposition as a verb is an action word. We have opposition as a noun. But we have few opposition as verbs. And the opposition can only be a verb as strong as it ought to be. Well, all of them, or the majority of them, stand and show that they do not like what the government is doing and they seriously oppose it by taking action. Right? Nothing is wrong with your new statement, the, the elite one. The opposition leader is accountable to the people. 
like the government ought to be accountable to the, to the people. It is the people who are responsible for holding the government accountable and for holding the opposition and opposition leader accountable too. The whole country, all the citizens, allow it to happen. Because when they find out these things happen, they don't band themselves together as a group of concerned people, disgruntled people, or whatever, and go and do a massive takeover of these properties. Even if, even if it is symbolic so that the world gets to see. Because when you do the massive takeover, obviously the so-called owner of these properties will come forward they can get the police involved, they can get the state involved. The media is going to pay attention. The issue will be ventilated and highlighted. But everybody expects one man to carry this fight and say, well, hey, Minister Tom Jones turned that 25 house locks in his name. And he sings for a day, a week, a month, a year, and nobody is paying him no mind because there is no force of the people behind him. So we all are responsible for this lunacy that takes place in this society. Please. Good morning, Kodakian listeners. I always say it's time for the opposition to start one big fight in the parliament and broke it up. And who in dead body won whom the Desi legislative branch? That's where the laws does make. They ain't supposed to go matter ain't supposed to go to court or nothing. Who in dead body won? They let's start in there. Let the revolution start inside there. The day in there they ain't serving no purpose with the one one seat majority with, with PPP gap. And they can't change nothing and they can't do nothing. And the speaker ain't allowing nothing. Ah three, four, three, four years he ain't allowing nothing. So what the hell are they doing in there? Broke it up and done. They got to start some way. Thank you for that voice. And the people who suffer is as a result of a criminal entity called the PNC. It is a matter of fact. Nobody can change them. And here what I've learned. The PPP like it that way. I see no other reason or no other explanation. I don't see, I see President Ali as a caring person. I don't think he's fearful of anybody. He's the president of this country. He's a stand-up guy. I don't see Jack Dew as a fearful person. And I continue to ask myself why they allow the PNC to get away with the crimes that they continue to commit against the people of this country. Somebody called me and tell me, Art Ignatin, calling for war, fighting. Jack Dio is the individual who pardoned no bench cop, who has become a thorn in the side of the government. Bench cop, for what he did, he led black people to their death in the office of the president compound, he should have rot in hell, in prison for the rest of his life. Jagdeo pardon him. This is the reality. The PPP got a mindset where they think about money and development. And they go after that at all costs. The PNC got a mindset where they think about power and money has nothing to do with develop power and they're willing to do anything to get power. This is the PNC's mindset. That's just the reality of the world we live in. And I say the PNC is a criminal organization. And the PPP likes it that way.
Nathan already talking about what gonna happen election time. But I could tell you, Nathan, I could tell you, there will be a strong resistance. Because if the PPP ain't willing for take y'all, and y'all remember the riots at Bath, the riots at Luziknan? Y'all remember them days? Y'all don't remember them days? There will be a strong resistance. Because people ain't taking fucking bullying no more. Just so you know nothing. You and your supporters and all the people who plan for rise up and take power by force. Oh, you still didn't get your ticket? This flight takes off every single day. Tap that subscription button. Thanks. Just beware. Just beware. If the PPP continues to allow this criminal organization, all other parts of the world, if opposition leaders and, and members of the opposition act the way that the PNC is that they would have been in jail. Until today, not one body has paid the price for the murder of Walter Rodney, the PNC murder of Walter Rodney. Nobody has paid the price for that. Walter Rodney get justice until today. Although after that we had a COI, which clearly shows that the PNC killed Walter Rodney. They're a criminal organization. No other part of the world people would facilitate a criminal organization. People would have done that in jail. We all have a perspective of the particular part of the world that we live in, that we want to experience in that particular way, in our own way, in our unique way, without all of the haters, without all of the naysayers. But you see, if that unique way is not rooted in love, then it always is going to come up against a whole lot of hurdles, a whole lot of conflict, a whole lot of political views. And then there you go. We need more political power. We need more political interaction. And that's how political organizations gain their power when there is political disputes in society. And knowing that, we as so-called society or the ones that exist outside of MP status, we should consider that and know that every time we bicker over things, every time they stir up the water to catch fish, the political power will grow. Their political power will grow. And now they have more power to do more things that they might not have had that power to do before. So we always want to consider that. But to be honest with you, if we don't come to grips with the fact that the experiences that we might picture in our minds, the kind of life that we want to really live and experience in and out of Guyana in the diaspora, right? We might never truly exist or experience that. We might never truly experience that if we don't start to understand that we got to come from a place of love for ourselves and a place of love for others. Verb. Well crafted sea moss gummies. Nutritious, delicious superfoods. What's your favorite flavor?